right, in the past we've talked about functions, and there's all sorts of different types of functions. But today I'm going to talk more specifically to you about linear functions. And in order to be a, a general function, there has to be one x value with every y value. So the x's can't repeat. That's um, a general function rule. However, for a linear function, it's still the same rule that applies, meaning you can only have one x for every y or one y for every x. The x's can't repeat, but it has to be a straight line. And that's the biggest difference between a linear function and then just any other kind of function. Okay, So linear functions have to be a straight line. And what I mean about the x's can't repeat I mean, yeah, if, if x is equal to 1, so this particular graph is showing distance traveled. So after one hour, the distance is 100 kilometers. Well, I can't say, well, if after one hour I can either go 100 kilometers or I can go 400 kilometers. There's only one answer, or there's only one y that goes with each x. After three hours, I go 360 kilometers. So that's what I mean by there is only one x and one y pair. Okay? So if you have this example right here, this is a function because for every x, there's only one y, or there's, on, there's only, um, there, sorry, the x's are not repeating. Um, but let me just show you, you can do the, um, the vertical line test, if you remember, and if I slide this anywhere here, for every x value, I only have one y value. So this is a function, and yes, it is a linear function because it is a straight line. All right, let's look here. Um, again, we can use our vertical line test, and we can see that, yes, it is a function, but it's not a linear function because it's not a straight line. Here, we can try it again. We use our vertical line test. Now, here, because this completely covers this line, that means that this is not a function. And this is an example of how for you can have how when there are different values for one x value, there's different y values for each for one x value, sorry that sounds confusing, for each x value there could be different y values, that means it's not a function. So if x is negative 2, we're saying that y can be 1, y can be 2, y can be 3, it can even be all these fractions and decimals in between. If x is negative 2, it can be y can be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. So because of that, this is not a function, and if it's not a function, it definitely cannot be a linear function. Even though it's a straight line, um, vertical lines like this are not considered functions. So again here, this is a function, and it is a linear function because it's a straight line. This is a function, and it is a linear function. And um, don't mistake, this is a horizontal line. Horizontal lines can be function. It's the vertical line that cannot be. So here you can see, no matter where I move this green line, it's only going to hit the green, I'm sorry, it's only going to hit the red line at one point, never at more than one point. Um, here we can see this is not a function because it hits in two different places. It hits here and it hits here just for that one movement. I can keep moving it and it's going to hit in two places no matter where I move it. So this is not a function, so therefore it is not a linear function. So we can look at a graph and we can use the graph to tell us whether or not the function is a linear function. So that's one thing that we can do. Another thing we can do is we can look at the values on a table. So here we have this table and here's the graph that corresponds to the table. But the idea here is if you have your x's on one side and your y's on the other, that you notice that there's a constant rate of change between your x's. And what I mean by that is every single x is going up by one each time. Here for my y's, my constant rate of change is that it's going down by 3 every time. So every y is subtracted by 3. We're not looking the relationship between the x's and y's. Don't mistake that. We're looking at each of the x's. We're looking at each of the y's. It doesn't have to be the same rate of change. Notice these are different, but it just has to be the same within all the x's and the same within all the y's. And so again, with the graph, you can look at the graph and see, using the vertical line test, that this is indeed a function, and because it's a straight line, it is a linear function. Here's an example um, where this is not a linear function, because on the x's, it's going up by 1 each time, which is good. However, the y's are going down by 3, and then down by 1, and then up by 1, and then up by 3. Because it's not, this is not constant, this is not a linear function. And again, you could look at your picture, and you could see that it's not a straight line, so therefore it's not a linear function. It is a function, it's just not a linear function. 
Um, so besides graphs and tables, we can also use the ordered pairs to look and to help us determine whether or not it's a linear function. And so just like with the table here, where the x's have to have the same difference, same thing here when I'm looking at my ordered pairs. If I look at my x's, I got 0, 4, 8, 12, and 16. So it's going up by 4 each time. So that's a good, that's a constant rate of change. What about here? This is at negative 3 and 0, so it went up by 3. It's going up by 3 again, and up by 3, and up by 3. So this one, yes, this is a linear function. Okay? Here, let's look. Um, we've got negative 4, negative 2, so it's going up by 2's every time on our x's, so that works out well. When we look at our y's, it's going down 12, down 4, up 4, up 12. So that's not, because it's not a constant on the y's, that means that no, this is not a linear function. Okay? Now, the, th the fourth way to be able to tell, so we've talked about graphs, we've talked about tables, we've talked about ordered pairs, the fourth and final way that you can tell whether or not it is a linear function is by looking at the equation. And if you have a, an equation that can be written, that you can manipulate the equation, you can change it around, you're not changing the numbers or the value, but you're just moving some things around, you're shifting it around, if you can make it, you can rewrite it in standard form so that it looks like this right here, ax plus by equals c, that's another way to show that it is a linear equation. If you can get it written this way, that means it is a linear equation. But what I want you to realize is that there's a couple of things that come along with this, okay? Um, X and Y have to have exponents of 1, or really they don't even have to have an exponent, because exponent of 1, you're just saying X to the power of 1 is just X, so it doesn't have to be an exponent. What that means is if you see an exponent, 2, 3, you know, any other number, 2 or higher, then therefore this cannot be a linear function. You cannot change it, shift anything around in any way to make it a linear function. Um, the, you cannot, A can be a zero, and B can be, or B can be a zero, but they cannot both be zero at the same time. So in the same function, you can't have both A and B be zero. It's not going to work that way. And then also, you cannot have um, the X and the Y in denominator. So you can't have six over five, or you can't have, I'm sorry, I'm going to say six over Y. 6 over y, or you cannot have 5 over x. If your denominator is in the bottom, if your variable is in the denominator in the bottom, that means it is not a linear equation. It's not a linear function. Um, you can have radicals, so I don't want to see square root of x. Um, you don't want to see absolute values of x. If you see those things, it's automatically not a linear function. Okay, there's no way you're going to be able to shift it around and make it that way. Um, what else I want to point out is you may see ax plus by equals c. You can have negative ax plus by equals c. You can have plus a negative because if you see plus a negative, that's the same thing as minus, and that works too. So if you see a minus, just know it can be rewritten as plus a negative. Um, or you can have a negative c. So I don't want you to focus on the signs. The signs, it can be, this can be subtracting here in the middle, and these can be positive or negative. C can be positive or negative. That's fine. Okay, um, so let's do a couple and let's talk about um, whether they can work. So let's say you have, um, let's say you have y equals 3x, okay? I can rewrite this by subtracting 3x from both sides of my equation so that this is now, because remember we want it to be ax plus by equals c. This is what we're going for here, okay? So if I do this and I rewrite it, this ends up being negative 3x plus y equals 0. This is in the correct form. You got ax, it's just my a is negative 3 plus b, my b is 1 here, we don't see it, and then my c is 0. So this works. So the answer is yes, this is a linear equation. I also want to point out, I just thought of it, I didn't say it, x's and y's cannot be multiplied times each other. So up here when I said, um, I forgot to point that out, x and y cannot be multiplied by each other. So I don't want to see, if you have an x times y, it's not a linear function, okay? 
Um, what if you have this one, xy equals 4? Is this a linear function? No, because x and y cannot be multiplied by each other. Could this be a linear function? Let's try it. We'll subtract 5x from both sides. So when I do that, that gives me negative 5x plus y equals negative 9. So is this in the form of ax plus by equals c? Sure, my a is negative 5, my b is 1, and my c is negative 9. So it works out well. Uh, what about this one, y equals 12? This one is a linear function. So if we've got, again, we wanted to say ax plus by equals c. Well, my a is going to be 0, so it's going to be 0 times x. My b is 1, and my c is 12. And if you look at back and you simplify it, 0 times x is 0, plus 1y is just y. Oh, I'm sorry, and I said c was 12. I'm 2. I'm sorry, c is 12. I needed to fix that. So that means y is equal to 12. And if you look at it on a graph, that's exactly, it just looks just like this. So you could see, well, this is what it looks like. So yeah, that's a linear function. And I can, I can use my vertical line test to double check that, and it works.